question 12. The diagram below shows an insect on the stem. The stem has two cards, X and Y. So basically, anything that is has water carrying huge remover, 100% I can guarantee you that the leaf here will die. Because without water, you are unable to photosynthesize. So because you are unable to photosynthesize, the leaves will eventually die. Okay, so this part is confirmed dead. Then after that, based on the diagram, so this one, food carrying tubes removed only. So that means actually the leaves here will most probably be alive because it can still receive water and can still make its own food. Now, which of the following is most likely to be true when the insect is at point A? Can the insect feed on the food made by leaves? Answer is yes and yes. Cross up no. So when you're doing MCQ question, go by column. Check the columns first. So it will still be able to feed on the food because the leaf here can still receive water to make food. Okay? Food is found in the watering carrying tubes. Wrong ah, straight away. So answer is two. Next. The diagram below shows a seedling. Which of the following shows the direction in which food and water are transported to part X? Okay? So basically, when you look at this part, so your seed leaf, okay, they say here already, transported to food, part X. So food comes from your seed leaf, so it's downwards. Correct? Okay? And then X is over here, okay? Transported to X. So water comes from your um, roots. So in this case, to part X. So therefore, water will go from here to here. So your answer should be number two. Food travel downwards from your seed leaves to X, and water travels upwards from your roots to X. Next. The diagram below shows tiny openings on the leaves at different surrounding temperatures. They open at close. Now, which of the following best explain why the tiny openings closes when it's around 40 degrees? So let's talk about functions of your tiny openings. Mainly, there are two functions. The first one is gaseous exchange. The second one would actually be water loss in the form of water vapor. Alright, I've spoken about this many times. Okay, so when it's at 40 degrees, you need to understand that it is very, very hot. Right, so you don't want excessive water loss because excessive water loss will kill your plant. Right, so this is actually a very high temperature. So basically, it is to reduce the amount of water loss to the environment. However, when this happens, it is a double-edged sword, meaning that it's no good for the plant also. Because when your stomata closes, you are reducing carbon dioxide. So when you reduce carbon dioxide, it also means that it decreases rate of photosynthesis for the plant. Okay, so it's a double-edged sword. Next. Jason conducted an experiment using a potted plant which has leaves with green areas in the middle and white areas. So this is actually variegated. So the one with the green areas is where you have chlorophyll. So without even thinking much, straight away I know, only the green areas will actually be able to make food because of the presence of chlorophyll. However, having chlorophyll is not the only factor. You have to factor in whether or not the leaf is able to receive sunlight and whether or not it has carbon dioxide. Okay, only when the three items are fulfilled. Chlorophyll, sunlight, carbon dioxide and water. Sorry, four items. Only then can your plant actually make food. So straight away, I know that there is a substance that removes carbon dioxide. Right? So granted that there is a substance that removes carbon dioxide, anything that is within this plastic bag, no need to see already, all don't have food one, all cannot carry out photosynthesis. So then after that, I look at these two. Okay, this one, the green area, okay, it has 
it, it does, it's not blocked. What area no chloroplast cannot, cannot, can. Okay? So basically, only S will turn dark blue. Alright? And we know that it turns dark blue because of the presence of starch. Okay? Presence of starch. Next. Mina set up the experiment as shown below. She added 8 ml of liquid X into each test tube, okay? And placed the experiment in a sunny spot. So sunny spot tells you that it's light. So probably this also hints you that, hey, this could be a photosynthesis question or a respiration question. Why? Because I see a grasshopper here, okay? Now, it will change color in the presence of carbon dioxide or oxygen as shown. Which color will be the liquid of X in ABC after two hours? So this one has light, okay? Got water, got light, okay? It can carry out photosynthesis. So in this case, my carbon dioxide will increase. So this should be blue, right? This one, nothing will happen. So probably stay purple, no change. This one carries out respiration only. So therefore, more carbon dioxide. Okay, sorry, I made a mistake. This one should be pink. More uh, oxygen present. Why? Because when you photosynthesize, you produce oxygen and you're taking carbon dioxide. So then your answer would be A is pink. So anything else is all wrong. So check out B is purple, C is blue. So answer two. Very straightforward. Next. Okay, the diagram below shows an experiment to find a carbon dioxide is needed for photosynthesis. So in this case, what is the change variable? Change variable is actually carbon dioxide. Okay? Now when you get a control set up, right? you want to remove away the change variable. So you don't want carbon dioxide. But in this case, already this one don't have already. So the opposite of this will be what? To put back the carbon dioxide. So therefore, everything else should be the same. Okay? So in this case, your answer would be three. Everything else is the same. Except that now you put back uh, you put back carbon dioxide. You don't have the substance to remove it. Next. Okay. Harris put a magnet next to the three rods. Okay. He recorded what happened. Which of the rods will definitely be a magnet? Now, when you want to be definitely a magnet, uh, you must use repulsion. You cannot use attraction. Because a magnet and something else that is made out of a magnetic material will also attract. So you cannot confirm. The only way that you can do that is only if they repel. Okay? So you take a look at it. Okay? So rock, why was repelled by the south pole of the magnet? Okay? So I know that this is confirmed. Okay? So therefore answer why. Okay? Because just by attracting, uh, like I say already, you don't know. Two circuits X and Y using identical batteries and bugs are set up in the diagram below. Which of the following statements about the above circuit is correct? Okay? So in this case, we know that there are two batteries. Two batteries and two batteries. Two bugs and two bugs. So you need to find what's the change variable. The change variable is only the arrangement. Everything else is the same. In exam, you have to check the number of batteries is the same. It's a trick question. Okay? So R is dimmer than P. This is wrong because this is in parallel. So therefore, I know this is wrong. In fact, it should be brighter. Okay? Now, but Q and S are equally, uh, equally bright. This is also wrong because this this is in parallel, it should be brighter. When R blows, S will not light up. This is also wrong. 
when Q blows, P will not light up. This is correct. So your answer is 4. Okay? It's in a series one. So if this fuses, there is a gap and there is no alternate pathway. You all must memorize the answer. Uh. How come, how come uh, you know, when one bulb fuses, the other will continue to light up? Your recess is at 9.45. Alright. Next, Raju had three rods, X, Y, and Z made of different materials. He placed the item in various position. D, E, F, and the circuit showed and observed. Okay, which one of the following statement is correct? Okay, so they, they are testing what essentially? This is the chain variable. Actually, what they are testing for is if these are conductors of electricity. So these results will tell you. Okay? So X, Y, Z. When X, Y, Z was placed at D, E, F, okay, but 1 and 2 actually lit up. X, Y, Z. Okay, what does this tell me? This tells me for sure that my D, okay, is actually a conductor of electricity because it's on the main line. If D is not a conductor of electricity, all eyes on screen, confirm uh, that all the parts will not light up. There is no way. If D is an insulator of electricity, everything else don't need to see already because it's on the main line. Can you see? There is no other way. I have to cross this pathway. So D is a D is confirmed a conductor. Then after that, let's look at Y and Z. I'm not so sure, you know, but one of them is a conductor. Why? Because I can go by this way, my D will light up. I can also go by this way, my B2 will light up. Okay? So if Y is an insulator and my B2 lights up, my F must be a conductor. If my F is a conductor, okay, what will happen? Sorry, if my F is an insulator, what will happen? My D will actually be lit up, but my B2 will not be lit up. So this tells me that, hey, my F here, my Z, which I put here, is also a what? Conductor. Why? One more time, ah. Huh? Because in order for B2 to light up, it has to travel this way. There is no other way. It has to bypass, it has to go through here. You cannot say, oh, I go here, then I U turn like that. You cannot. So there's only one way. So the fact is that when Z was placed here, this lit up. So this tells me that my Z and D is confirmed conductor. Now, the question here is, is my Z, is my Y an insulator? I don't know. Because, for all you know, the electric current looks like that. That's it. I can just ignore this. Okay, so let's go. Okay, when they swap places, when Y was placed here, everything didn't light up. Ah, this tells me that this is an insulator. Okay? And then after that, this confirms it also. When Y was an insulator, okay, if Y is an insulator, when they put it here, your B2 did not light up. So this confirms. How come B2 never light up? Because this is an insulator, my, my Y, so it cannot cross. So this confirms already. When Y was placed here and Y was placed here, okay, it didn't light up. So therefore, I know. Okay? So, the answer would be only Z and X 
is conductor. Okay. Number three. Any questions? So to do this question, uh, you need to trace the pathway. It is what it is, and the path cannot you turn one. Many students get confused because they feel that it, it maybe can do this. Cannot. It's a one directional thing. That's how you make sure that you don't make any mistakes. Okay. Next. Okay. Which of the following setup will enable all three bulbs in the circuit to light up? Now. Trace again, positive, sideway, here, 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 and here. Okay, so A is plausible. Now we look at B. Trace. Ah, this one cannot already. Can you see it both comes up from the tip? This one Ah, cannot, this one both come out on the tip Okay, the last one Can, D is possible So answer is 2 Now be very careful ah uh. Just because the tip is touching each other uh, doesn't mean cannot. The only way uh, is to trace. See, I trace the side way I go up, it must exit by the bottom part. If I go in by the bottom part, I must exit, exit by the side part. Go up, go down, and then side way. Continue. Okay? So it doesn't mean that just because uh, the, two, the two tips are touching each other means cannot. Next. Okay. Umi set up the following. Okay. To find out how much light can pass through plastics. Okay. P, Q, and R. She then recorded her observations in the graph below. Okay. Based on Umi's result, which of the following shows the properties of plastic P, Q, and R? Okay. So basically, if you take a look at it, okay, P does not allow any light. So P is what? Opaque. So straight away, we cross out these two. Q allows some light to pass through. So it's translucent. It's not transparent. And R allows most light to pass through. So therefore, it is 2. Take note of how I am using the elimination method to eliminate answers that are not plausible. Next. Dennis poured water at different temperatures into four containers A, B, C, and D. She covered each container with a lid and left the containers in the room for five minutes. The room temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. She recorded her observations as shown in the diagram below. Okay, now, so to do this, uh, what you need to understand is where the water droplets are on the side is where there is warmer water vapor. The source of warmer water vapor. Okay, so how does it work? So for example, if I have warmer water vapor here, I will touch the cooler surface, the part that you see water droplets is where condensation has taken place okay so always remember this two points the side with the water droplets is where the warmer water vapor is Finish it, yeah. Okay, that's great. Okay, once again, the site where the where the water droplets can be found is where the warmer water vapor is. Okay, so for, for example, in this case, the warmer water vapor is actually found here. 
the warmer water vapour is actually found on the outside. The warmer vapour is actually found inside, okay, and there is no uh, such thing as warmer water vapour in the sense that, you know, okay, temperature is either the same or there's no cooler surface, okay? Go on, question 23. Okay, one more time, ah, to do this kind of question, okay, the site that you find the water droplets is the site where the warmer water vapor is. Now, the next thing is also to important to note that, okay, the surface where the water droplets can be found are formed is the cooler surface and this is the place where condensation has taken place quickly settle down take out your booklet A I'm going through booklet A of your revision paper booklet A of revision paper question 23 I will repeat one more time. All eyes on screen. Okay, for this question, it's a condensation question because you see water droplets. How do you know which area is the warmer area with the warmer water vapor? Is you look at where the droplets are formed. The site where the droplets is formed is where the warmer water vapor is. So for example, for B, I have water vapor, uh, droplets forming on the inside of the container. I will know that my the water vapor that is inside the container here is probably warmer than the cooler surface. This one, A. Is the warmer water vapor on the outside of the container or inside? Outside or inside? Adele, outside or inside the warmer water vapor? Uh, inside. Outside, because the water droplet is formed outside. Look at what I say. The site with the water droplets is where the warmer water vapor is. That means it has a higher temperature than the what? Cooler surface. So because this part here is cooler, I'm going to highlight all the cooler surface for you all to see. Why this one so big and thick? Huh? Okay, can you see these are cooler surface? These are cooler surface. These are cooler surface. And these are this one no cooler surface. Okay? So then the warmer water vapor from the surrounding air must change color, right? Change to red color. Huh? Okay? When they touch the cooler surface, then they lost heat and they condense over here. Do you understand? For this one, the warmer water vapor inside the container touch the cooler surface of the container lost heat and then condensed to water droplets. This one also, same thing. Okay? So what shows the temperature? So they say here, right, room temperature is 30 degrees. So granted that room temperature is 30 degrees, okay, then the water must be lower than 30 degrees for this one. Because then you get the cooler surface. Right, because the warmer is on the outside. So A needs to be below 30 degrees. So your answer is 10. Because if it's 30 also, it's the same. Is there any heat loss or heat gain? Answer is no. B. In this case, if you take a look at it, the warmer water vapor is inside because the water droplet is forming on the inside. So temperature here must be more than 30 degrees. Okay, so your B has to be more. So correct? Yes. After that, you have your C. Must 
be warmer than 30 degrees. This one, no change at all. There is no heat loss, heat gain, so it could be the same. So answer four. Okay? So be very careful. Take note of these two important points that I've written for you. Next. Okay, those who just came in, don't worry. I've recorded this, I'll post it up. Next. Which of the following shows the correct heat transfer? So basically, boiling is heat gain. Ah. So straight away, ah, this is wrong. Condensation is heat loss, correct. Evaporation is heat loss, wrong. Melting is heat loss, wrong. So answer two, go by elimination method. I stress again, MCQ, you need to go by elimination method because it can be very tricky. <coughs> Next, okay. Which of the following is true? Water loses heat to the surrounding in process A. What is process A? Process A is what? Evaporation. So evaporation is gain heat, right? So one is wrong. Water vapor loses heat to the surrounding in process B. Correct. Because it's condensation. Then check the rest. Process A only takes place in the presence of light, no? Process B, condensation, process A is boiling, wrong. So now I know that by elimination method, there is only one plausible answer. Each MCQ is worth two marks, so you'll be strategic. 26. Okay. How temperature affects the rate of evaporation? Remember, this is your MV. Uh, sorry, this is your CV, change variable. This is your MV. I cannot stress to y'all how much y'all must annotate MV and CV, but of course y'all will ignore me, but never mind, I still must say. Because by doing so, I didn't know already, everything else must remain the same except for my temperature. So when I look at it, these two must be the same. Okay? And then, no heater and heater. Okay, so this is the change variable, very good. What, what the temperature difference? So answer should be A and C. Okay, of course you want to go by elimination method, check. James made some observation about melting point, which of the substance could exist in a liquid state. So, take a look at it. W is melting point is also the same as freezing point. I want everyone to write this down. In your exam, if you encounter such a, such a question, when you see melting point, straight away write down it is also the same as freezing point. You must, you must. Don't be complacent, please. Okay, so you understand. So, granted that it melts at 10 degrees, at 25 degrees, it, it will become a liquid already, so correct. X, it only melts at 80. 25 degrees is lower than 80. So at 25, it is still a solid, so no. Why? 30 degrees then melt, no. So at 25, it's still a solid. Zero degrees melt already. So at 25 degrees, it's already melted. So answer would be... Hey, sorry, I think I take something wrongly. Answer is W and Z. Answer four. Okay? And make annotations like that so it will help you to make sure your answer is correct. Now the graph below shows the change of temperature in a container of ice. The temperature was heated for 25 minutes. How come no change here? Because during change of state, temperature does not increase. does not change, sorry. Okay? So which of the following? So they say already, right? Ice. Ice is solid. So from 0 to uh, 5 minutes, okay, it's still stuck at 0 degrees. So between point P and Q, it is still getting heated up. It's still gaining heat, but its temperature is not changing because it's melting. Okay? And then after that, R and S is boiling. Why? Because it's at 100 degrees. So answer is 4. Okay?